Hi everyone and welcome uh, to Riviera Nauticom Cam uh, and in this um, edition of our video briefing uh, series I'm going to take you through uh, the, the charts, the maps, um, navigating around the Gippsland Lakes um, but before we talk about uh, navigation and, and voyages around, around the Gippsland Lakes um, first we need to talk about the weather forecast. The number one consideration whenever we're thinking of going boating is to be on top of the weather forecast. Um, you can talk to us, uh, our friendly staff at any stage, um, if you do want to get an update on the weather forecast. However, these days with um, smartphones, smart devices, um, if you uh, Google or if you type into your search engine BOM, uh, as in the, the abbreviation for Bureau of Meteorology, BOM Gippsland Lakes, um, you'll get the Gippsland Lakes Marine Forecast. Um, now this is a forecast that is dedicated for the Gippsland Lakes, um, so try and forget about any other favourite weather apps and things that you've got. Um, we can't do better for boating on the Gippsland Lakes than going by the BOMS Gippsland Lakes forecast. Um, it doesn't tell you a lot about um, temperatures and things, but what it does uh, do is it gives you uh, critical information that we need for boating, which is wind direction and wind strength. Um, so it's going to give you wind strength in knots um, as its wind speed. Um, so if you're not familiar with, with knots, um, 0 to 10 knots of, of wind speed is a, is a light breeze. Um, 10 to 15 knots is, is, is getting towards a moderate sort of a breeze. Um, 15 knots plus is, is getting to be quite a stiff uh, sort of a wind. Um, and at 25 knots, um, the Bureau will is issue a strong wind warning. And at that point, we need to be really careful about what the sorts of things that we're thinking to do um, from a boating perspective. So again, if you're not sure, talk to our friendly staff and, um, and we can help you interpret the weather forecast. Okay, so once we're on top of the weather forecast, we can start to plan some voyages around the lakes. And typically on, on our boats at Riviera Nordic, you've got a, a few different tools for navigating around the lakes. What I'm going to uh, focus on today is the Gippsland Ports uh, boating guide. Um, so we're going to look at that in a fair bit of detail. Um, having touched on the weather forecast, it's extremely important, it's critically important that the, um, uh, the most important decisions that we make in boating around the lakes is that we want to make sure that we're ending up in a sheltered destination for your, for your evening destination. So when we're looking at different destinations around the lakes, some of them are going to ex be exposed in certain wind directions and some of them are going to be nice and sheltered and they're the ones that you want to go for. So what we've got in our blue folder that you've got on board your boat at Riviera Nordic um, is this really fantastic two-page table and it's got listed down the left-hand side all of the most popular destinations around the Gippsland Lakes and then you'll see here in certain forecast wind directions whether or not it's a good place to be. So we say excellent or we say good um, and in some cases we say no. Okay, so this is a great sanity check for you when you're on top of the forecast and you're thinking of places that you want to go. It's really important that we're, we're aiming to be at sheltered destinations for the evening. Um, so I'll put that aside. Of course you can talk to us at any stage you want to about the decisions that you're, you're needing to make for um, uh, to bounce those, those decisions off us. As I said, we're going to focus now in some detail on the Gippsland Ports Guide. Um, stick with us, it's quite a long slog, uh, but it's important that we get through it and that uh, you're able to understand uh, the different voyages available to you on the lakes. Okay everyone, so this is the Gippsland Ports Boating Guide uh, for the Gippsland Lakes. Um, you can do all of your navigating um, via this guide. Um, I'll also just highlight for you, uh, there's a couple of good resources on our website and one of them is basically an electronic version of this that Gippsland Ports offers, um, which is a really handy tool, basically converts your smartphone into a chart plotter and there's a link to that on our website. Uh, but for, for the sake of this presentation, we'll, we'll look at the paper maps that we've got uh, on board your boat. Uh, for you. So the top section of, of this map, and this is a double-sided series of, of uh, maps on the boating guide, the top section up here gives us an overview of the whole lake system. Um, so it's, it's great for orientation and getting your bearings of, of the whole system, um, but it is important that once we are planning a voyage or once we're underway and navigating that we are um, going to the most detailed plan that's available. And you'll see on each of the maps there's a series of dotted boxes uh, that means that there's more, more information available on another plan somewhere um, on the boating guide. Um, if we start with our overview here, uh, to get ourselves orientated, we are currently at Riviera Nordic, which is at the mouth of Chinaman's Creek here in Meetung. Meetung is a really, um, uh, it's a good 
indicator on each of the maps to find and get yourselves orientated because Meetung finishes in a spit of land called Shaving Point. Uh, it's a knobbly little spit of land there. Um, as an example, here it is again over, over here on another plan. That knobbly spit is the, the tip of Meetung. Um, so Chinaman's Creek is just around the corner from, from Meetung. Um, on this plan, I'm going to show you where your charter limits are and get yourself uh, and get you orientated with the whole lake system. Um, so if we look to the east of where we are here, um, there's an area we'll look at in more detail, but it's down here, I'll draw it on here, and it's called, a big pardon, it's down here, it's called Barrier Landing, and that is the limit, um, the charter limit of where you can take your boat uh, from Riviera Nordic down at Barrier Landing. Um, in the west, if you're really keen, and we come all the way up through here um, and into McLennan Strait, um, if we draw a line at the far end of McLennan Strait, um, that is our charter limit in the west. So our, our vessels at Riviera Nordic are not to enter into, into Lake Wellington. Um, of course, there's a lot of area in between here for us to explore. Um, we've got uh, three major rivers that flow into, into Lake King, um, and there's charter limits up, up each of those rivers as well. So we've got the Tambo River up here, uh, the Nicholson River, and the Mitchell River. Um, so the Tambo River uh, for yachts, um, your limit is at the Princess Highway Bridge. Um, motor cruisers actually fit under that bridge and can keep going up to a place we call the cliffs, which is up at the bends in the river um, up here. So that's your limit for motor cruisers, for yachts, back here at the uh, Princess Highway Bridge. Um, in the Nicholson River, all Riviera Nordic boats can head up to the Princess Highway Bridge, but no further. So no boats get under the bridge at the, the Nicholson River. Um, the Mitchell River is, is somewhat out of bounds for our fleet. Um, it's a river that requires some local knowledge to, to get up. So if, you, uh, if you're keen to venture up any, any of the Mitchell River, talk to us beforehand. Um, we'll give you some advice there. In any event, um, you can um, find a public jetty just inside the entrance of the Mitchell River, um, and that is there for, for your use. But uh, we ask you not to venture further than that public jetty at the entrance of the silt jetties. Um, just to, again, as an overview, in this area through here, this is our national park area. So there's two national parks here. You can only get to them essentially uh, by boat. Um, so plenty of nature-based um, exploration through, through this area here. Um, a popular spot is to get down this Bungar Arm. And uh, just for the sake of talk talking about charter limits, there's a spot in the Bungar Arm called the First Blowhole and it sits about here, it's just beyond the little island. I don't know if we can make that out, but just beyond the, the little island in the Bungar Arm is our, is our charter limit down there. We'll look at that in a bit more, in a bit more detail. Um, before we leave this overview, overview, you'll also see there's some of these hazard icons. So we see them up here in the, in the rivers. Um, these are overhead power lines. Um, and uh, as an example, up, uh, up the rivers here, these icons are referencing power lines which are up against the bridge. Um, so they don't really come into play for you. They're not a hazard for, for any of our boats as long as you're not trying to get uh, a boat that doesn't fit under the bridge under the bridge, if that makes sense. Um, you'll also see them in, uh, in Painesville here. So Raymond Island is right in the middle of the lake system, separated from Painesville by Macmillan Strait, and there's a power line that goes across here. That is well and truly higher than any of our, any of our vessels, so you, you can pass freely underneath that power line. As you can over here, um, these hazards here are showing power lines in Boxes Creek. You get under those, no worries at all. Um, talk to our staff if you're in a larger yacht. We're in a G436 as we give this presentation. And this size of yacht, we would ask you to use caution about the power line, which you, I'm pointing to here, which is in Picnic Arm. Um, now the yachts do fit under it, but it's getting a little too close for comfort if we happen to have very high water levels. So perhaps talk to our, our staff before venturing under that power line in Picnic Arm. So we're gonna to start to look now in a little bit more detail uh, over some of these areas. Um, we'll start with looking east of our current location. So again, to let you know that this is us located here at the mouth of Chinaman's Creek, and we're gonna look at this Plan I to see what's going on east of us. Um, so Plan I is, is down here. Um, again, to get your bearings, there's that knobbly shaving point that we were talking about earlier. Um, we are here at the mouth of, of Chinaman's Creek, and we're looking perhaps at a voyage down to the charter limit, um, as we mentioned earlier, which is at Barrier Landing. Um, Barrier Landing is number 53 on the map, if you can see that. So the way that our public jetties are referenced on the, uh, the, the um, Gippsland Ports maps here is that it has a number, and it typically has a blue star. So a number and a blue star will tell you that that's a public jetty that you can head for. And if you're keen, you can have a look over the page. And if we looked up number 53 on the list here, 
it'll tell you that it is barrier landing and it tells you some of the facilities that you can expect to see at barrier landing. Um, so looking at our voyage down there, um, the lakes, uh, as a general comment, the lakes has a lot of shallow areas um, and there's a lot of areas that we need to keep out of or, or the boats will, will run aground. And we'll talk about um, extracting yourselves um, from running aground uh, shortly. Um, but if we look at all these maps, they're trying to indicate to you where the deep water is and where the shallow water is. So you'll see we've got dark blue water and we've got light blue water. Um, the dark blue water is, is well and truly deep enough for your boat. Um, the light blue water, as a good rule of thumb, we want to stay out of the light blue unless we're deliberately uh, going down a marked channel, such as through here. Okay, so I'll just say that again, we wanna stay out of the light blue water, the shallow water, unless we're deliberately going down a marked channel. Um, so uh, channels, so a lot of uh, the shallow areas on the Gippsland Lakes are marked. Um, they're marked with navigational aids, which are either uh, timber posts or, f or floating uh, buoys. Um, the lateral marks, so we, we see a lot of markers that are red and green. Um, we see other markers such as cardinal markers, which are yellow and black. Um, and there's various um, uh, bits of information available on these maps that, that indicate to you which side you should be passing. However, we find that typically when you are looking at a particular marker on the map, you'll usually find there's a deep water side and a shallow water side. Okay, so the first thing to remember that every marker is there for a purpose and we must try and make sure we're passing on the correct side of the marker. But quite often if you reference your map, there's gonna be a shallow side and a deep side and we wanna stay on the, on the deep water side of that marker. So if we're planning a voyage from uh, Chinaman's Creek where we are here at Riviera Nautic down to uh, the barrier landing at number 53 down here. Um, the first part of our voyage between uh, Chinaman's Creek and Bells Point is fairly straightforward. We've got lots of nice deep water off Bancroft, uh, in Bancroft Bay here. Um, but the marker at Bells Point, we need to make sure we're staying outside that marker as we come around the bend. Um, and of course, we've got a lot of shallow water ahead of us here as well. So we do need to use Bells Point as a turning mark. Um, but just making sure we don't cut the corner between the marker and the land at Bells Point. So we come around Bo Bells Point, we turn left, and that means that we've got Flanagan Island on our right hand side. Um, we've got the mainland shoreline on our left hand side as we're coming down Reeves Channel here. Um, incidentally, we've passed Nungurna at that point, uh, which is a lovely sort of daytime destination for picnicking and so on. Um, we've got Harper's Bite here, which uh, has a couple of public swing mooring buoys uh, for your use. Um, and there's also now, not shown on this map, but at Naya Rimalang here, there's a public jetty as well, which takes you up to the, the Heritage Park and Homestead at Naya Rimalang. Um, so plenty of good water for boating down this Reeves Channel, but you can see as you're getting down to this point here, the deep water's running out and we've got shallow water in front of us here. And we've got a series of markers around, around this area. Um, the markers to, at the northern side here, we, we're gonna forget about. They take us into the township of Lakes Entrance or, or even outside the entrance, uh, which is somewhere that we're not allowed to go in our Riviera Nordic fleet. So what we are concerned about is these markers closer into Fraser Island. Um, so as we're coming down Reeves Channel, we're looking to our right hand side and we'll see where Flanagan Island finishes and Fraser Island starts. Um, and at that point there, if we're sailing, we want to drop our sails um, and we want to, uh, kind of against our common sense, we want to go in really close to Fraser Island in through here. So these cardinal markers with two, two uh, arrows pointing down, that's telling us that the good water is to the south. So we're going to stay between the marker, so south being down the page effectively, um, we're going to stay between the marker and the land at Fraser Island as we come through here. Um, and essentially then all we're doing is, f is following the shoreline around at Fraser Island. So between these two markers here, um, straight between the two islands of Fraser and Rigby. And as we come out the other end, we've got red and green markers that we're gonna stay between. Um, so the good channel is between the red and the green. In this in instance, uh, we are technically heading out of port. So we're going to keep green markers to port or to our left and red markers to our right or starboard. And that takes us straight to the, the jetty at, at barrier landing. Um, one word of caution about barrier landing, you'll see how close we are to the entrance to the ocean. Um, this is effectively the plug hole of the lake system to the ocean. Um, so we do get strong current flows or tidal flows through this area here. Um, and while it doesn't really change the water level a, a great deal in the Gippsland Lakes, um, it does sort of rush past the, the jetty here. So um, there's two options that you've got for mooring your boat down a barrier landing. If you do want to use the, the public jetty, we ask you to only use the outer face of the 
the jetty um, because if you're trying to use the, the inner sections of, of the jetty down there, you can get yourself into all sorts of trouble quite easily um, if those tidal flows are moving quickly. Um, aside from the jetty, we actually also have a couple of hundred metres of beautiful lake beach all the way along here. And you're welcome in any of our Riviera Nordic boats to nose the boat so forward uh, gently up to the, to the sand at the beach. And there's posts in the sand here uh, that are, are there for the purpose of, of tying mooring ropes to. So you can nose up directly to the beach there as another option. Um, so we'll, we'll leave, um, I should mention incidentally that returning from Barrier Landing we really have to just do the same way that, that we came in. Um, but a lovely spot down at Barrier Landing, it's where you find a lot of the crystal clear water, a lot of the sandy beaches, um, both on the lake side and easy walking access over to the, uh, to the 90 mile beach as well. And incidentally you might not know that uh, the 90 mile beach is the longest beach in Australia and um, it's uh, the second longest beach in the, in the whole world. So um, very worth a visit. Um, even in what we would consider busy times on the Gippsland Lakes, you can feel like you're the only person on earth when you're, when you're walking along the 90 mile beach. Um, what we're going to do now, if I just quickly reference our, our overall plan again, we were just looking at the very eastern end of the lakes here. Um, and just to, to give you a guide, uh, the journey we were just talking about then, that voyage is, is really only about a, an hour or so in each direction um, if you're traveling at, at some sort of cruising speed. Um, what we're going to look at now is the middle chunk of the lakes and we'll do that by flipping over the page here. And so to get you orientated, guess what? There's our knobbly spit of, of shaving point, uh, which uh, as we said is a good reference mark. This is us at the mouth of Chinaman's Creek. Um, and as we move west, we've, we've got Raymond Island right in the middle of the lake system, our national park area through here, um, and Locksport and, and beyond as we head further west. Um, so if we were now planning a voyage to head up towards this, this end of the lakes up here, um, Shaving Point incidentally um, has deep water all the way around it and this is blown up here. We can see we've got a, a dotted uh, box here in plan H. Um, so Shaving Point we see in, and Meetung we see in detail here. Um, yellow markers that we'll see in various locations around the lakes, mainly near Meetung and Painesville. Um, they're not navigational markers, the yellow ones. The, the yellow, and these are floating buoys, the yellow buoys are purely indicating a speed restriction um, inside those markers. So uh, between these markers and the land all the way through Meetung is a, a five knot restricted speed zone. Um, but as we come around Shaving Point, you can see we've got deep water pretty much right up to the land at Shaving Point. So there's not even a nav navigational marker in the water there as we as we come around um, Shaving Point. So we've uh, got nice deep water as we come around the corner. Incidentally, right here is probably the deepest spot right on the lake system. Um, it's about 16 to 18 metres deep in a, in a hole right there. Um, but as we come around Shaving Point, um, the lake system starts to open up in front of us as, as we've got Lake King out here in front of us as we've come around Shaving Point. Um, we do need to make sure we're looking out for these three red markers, port hand markers. Um, they're indicating shallow areas off uh, Luderick Point. Um, so as we come around Shaving Point, that's what we're looking out for next. So it's really important that we've done a bit of pre-planning to know, th know what we're looking for next. Um, and it's really important that someone on board or perhaps a couple of people on board are acting actively navigating um, the whole time. So typically when it goes wrong, we find it's because people have, have uh, kind of dropped the ball with the, with the navigation, they've stopped concentrating, and they think they might be here, but they're really here, um, as an example. So it's, it is really important that people are actively navigating once you are underway. Um, once we found these three red markers, we're just going to stay on the deep water side of those. We've got shallow water, we've got, we got deep water, nice and self-explanatory. We stay on the deep water side and then, as I said, the lake system opens up in front of you. Um, this is a fairly common path of travel to traverse back and forth um, up and down what's called Campbell Channel. Um, and you'll see that it's, it's, there's some markers here that are protecting us from a huge amount of shallow water. And you can see uh, that these markers are about two thirds of the way across um, that part of the lake. Um, so unfortunately just because we're a long way from shore we can't necessarily assume that we are in um, in deep water. Um, this marker here off Carstairs Bank, um, that's the one we're really looking out for whenever we're traversing back and forth. It's, it sticks out the furthest, it's also the most prominent marker to see from a distance. So if we're coming from the Meetung direction around Luderick Point, we're looking for this marker but we probably can't see it yet on the horizon from back here. So all we can do at this point is steer a course that 
favours Raymond Island compared to the land um, down on the, the southern side here. Um, so we're steering perhaps towards the, the land at Raymond Island. We're not talking about hugging the shoreline or anything like that. You know, we're, we're talking about a two thirds, one third rule as we head up towards Carstairs Bank. You'll see Carstairs Bank eventually appear on the horizon. Um, again, keeping in mind that you're looking for that marker to appear about two thirds of the way across that water horizon in front of you. And then we're just gonna stay on the deep water side of Carstairs Bank. And importantly, we continue straight on. So we don't do any turning at Carstairs Bank. We continue straight on past another red marker and there's a corresponding green marker off Harrington Point um, protecting, some, protecting you from sh some shallow water off Harrington Point. So we just split the middle of, of all of those markers. At that point, we might con continue straight on and we might want to head into uh, Duck Arm, for example, which is a really protected, sheltered um, arm of water. Um, we might want to uh, perhaps head around the southern end of Raymond Island into Painesville or we might want to use these markers, these channel markers to get us into the Bungar Arm. And we'll look at that now in some detail. Um, plan F is what we need to go for if we're looking for, um, for Bungar Arm. And we'll take Carstairs Bank as a reference point as we, as we go up to plan F, which is up here. So Carstairs Bank is this one up here. So now we've got the most detail available to us. So if we're coming from the Meetung direction, we're coming this way, we pass Carstairs Bank, we come straight on, and we've got more red markers to our left. That's that um, corresponding green marker off Harrington Point. And what we're doing at this point to get into the Bungar Arm is we're following the red markers around. And if we follow the red markers around, we've got green markers that meet us on the, on the other side and we are in the channel. Um, so again, if you're on a sailing boat, we'd be dropping our sails out here and doing the narrow channels under motor only. Um, so as we come down the Bungaram channel, we've got uh, red and green markers. We're coming into harbour at this stage. So we've got red markers uh, to port to our left and starboard markers, uh, green markers to starboard, which is our, our right. Um, what I do need to indicate here on this particular map um, is a change that has um, been affected in, in reality, which has not picked up on the paper maps. And that is that three cardinal markers that were quite confusing have been removed. Um, so even though I'm scribbling on here, I'm actually simplifying things for you. So these cardinal markers don't exist. And what happens now is if you stay between red and green markers, you come down this steamer channel. And the steamer channel eventually brings you out to the steamer landing jetty. So if we looked, at, looked up number 23 at this blue star, we'd see the steamer landing public jetty. So that's again there for your use. A bit like barrier landing, gives you great walking access over the sand dunes to the 90 mile beach again. So a lovely beach, uh, beach spot. Incidentally, you'll get some of the best sunsets um, you've ever seen uh, in this area down here um, as the sun sets in the west over the water and, and all of these little, little islands as well. Um, in addition to steamer landing down here, we've got Ocean Grange, a very similar experience. Um, you've got the homestead there at, at Ocean Grange as well with a, a, a tower, so you can pick it from the water. Uh, that's number 22 there, Ocean Grange. And there's a separate channel that comes in to Ocean Grange. Um, it intersects with the steamer channel up here. So it's just a series of red and green markers that intersect with, with each other. Um, just one word of caution that I do want to point out in these channels, and, and this is essentially a loop if you like, you can go in one way and come out the other way. Um, if you've been at steamer landing and you wish to come out the Grange channel out this way, um, be cautious of this first green marker here. Um, so that green marker catches people out from time to time. If you're wanting to head down this channel, the first thing we need to do as we leave steamer landing is come around outside that green marker. Okay, just watch you don't cut the corner here and head for the, uh, the red and green further down. Um, so yeah, down at, at Barrier Landing, um, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, down the Bungar Arm, um, these are the two main destinations you're headed for, uh, 22 Ocean Grange and 23 uh, Steamer Landing. I will just um, talk a little bit, bit about heading further down the Bungar Arm. If I come back to our, our larger um, scale plan here, um, so those two areas we're talking about are, are about here. Uh, but as I said uh, at the outset, you can head all the way down to this first blowhole here. That's the absolute limit for our charter boats. Um, so there's some lovely spots along the southern edge of, um, uh, of the Bungar Arm that you can nose up to. There's no more jetties, but you can nose up to the campsites along here at the Bungar Arm or down at the first blowhole. Um, there are though, there are some shallow areas down in the Bungar Arm and they're not, not marked with, uh, with channel markers. Um, so what you need to do is keep in mind, again, a two thirds, one third rule. We want to favor the northern shoreline all the way along Bungar Arm. 
Again, we're not hugging the shoreline, but we're applying about a two thirds, one third rule um, so that we just favour the, the northern side of the arm in the bunga. Of course, at some point, you're going to want to nose into the, the southern shoreline because that's where you get the nice access over to the, to the 90 mile beach. Um, so stay out wide until you find a spot you want to try and come into. And we're just going to do a perpendicular 90 degree turn and very slowly at this point come towards the, the southern shoreline. And we do it slowly so that if we do hit the bottom somewhere that we don't want to hit the bottom, uh, we've got a good chance of being able to extract ourselves and, and try somewhere slightly different. Um, the worst of the shallow areas and the southern end of the bunga are after this little spit here, not, not far past um, steamer landing. Um, so you want to head a fair way down the arm before you start trying to, to nose into the bank there. And I hope that uh, that makes sense for you. Um, we're going to move on from the, from the uh, Bunga Arm into another part of the National Park at Spermwell Head and Rotomar Island. Um, Spermwell Head has a, a jetty, number 16 here, and getting to it is, is quite easy because it is um, basically a direct path without a channel straight into the, to the jetty at, uh, at Spermwell Head. Um, it is a relatively exposed jetty, so we need to be uh, cautious about when we choose to, to head there. You can see that it's um, exposed to basically anything from the from the east at um, at Spermwell Head. It is a, a good lunchtime sort of destination. There's barbecues there, picnic grounds, um, but you want to make sure that it's uh, quite a still night if, you, if you're going to be there overnight. Um, further down here, number 17, is Rotomar Island. Really pretty nature-based spot. Um, you're almost uh, guaranteed to see uh, kangaroos and, and other wildlife down at, at Rotomar Island. And there's some beautiful nature-based walks that go all the way or around Rotomar Island, but also head through the marshy area through here all the way to the 90 mile beach. So if you're into your, your nature walks and your bush walks, a, a must do on the, on the lakes. Um, to get down to Rotomar, so that's number 17, the blue star is, is the jetty. Um, we need to be looking for these three red markers. And um, a word of caution about these three red markers is that they're very close to everything related to the Bunga Arm channel. Um, but we need to make sure that we are not passing between, for example, this marker and this marker because they're not related to each other. These two are, these two aren't. So these three red markers down to Rotomar um, are purely guiding you down. We're going to leave those to port to our left as we come down to the jetty at Rotomar Island. Um, in reality, and I'll show you on the, the plan F again that gives you more detail, that's the three red markers that are guiding us down to Rotomar Island coming from this direction. Um, we're going to leave those to port to our left. Um, in reality, they've differentiated these from the Bunga Arm by making these floating buoys. Everything to do with the Bunga Arm channels is in fixed piles or posts. Um, so between the buoy and the post is not a good place to go, but between the two posts is. Um, so again, I, I hope that um, that makes sense for you. Um, to the middle of, of the lake system here, I mentioned Duck Arm earlier. Duck Arm is a lovely spot to head to, well, in any condition, but it is a nice safe haven if the weather does turn on you. Um, all those little icons in Duck Arm and Picnic Arm around the corner, these are public swing mooring buoys. So they're there for your use, um, and you can uh, tie a, a bow line off the front of the boat uh, to a, a swing mooring buoy, and it's a lovely way to, uh, to spend the night uh, drifting as if you were at anchor, but um, in a more secure state. We've also got the beach inside James Point. So if we were to head into Duck Arm and do a U-turn to the left, we'd end up on the on the shoreline beach um, in, at, uh, at James Point. A lovely spot um, there, and it's nice and protected in anything from the east, but it is to be avoided in, in any sort of southwesterly um, wind forecast. Um, heading into Painesville. So Painesville is uh, one of the bigger towns um, on the lake system, great for supplies. Um, you can literally moor the boat and walk down the jetty to a restaurant at the end of the jetty. Um, and we need to go to plan E if we're going to look at, uh, at Painesville in, in a lot of detail. So that's, uh, that's up here, plan E. Um, if we're looking at the southern end of Painesville, if we're coming around um, the bottom end of Raymond Island, um, we've got two cardinal markers here and you can see they're protecting from shallow water. So we're just going to stay around the outside of those cardinal markers. Um, we've got a special purpose buoy, which is our five knot speed zone buoy. So at this point um, on, we just need to make sure um, that we're, we're really at a pace which is probably about a slow jogging pace and it's not creating any significant boat, uh, boat wake. Um, as we head into the strait at, um, at Painesville, so again this is Macmillan Strait which separates Raymond Island from the township of, of Painesville. Um, the dotted line here you'll see is a vehicular cable ferry. So it's a ferry, a car ferry that goes back and forth between Painesville and, and Raymond Island. Um, it goes back and forth all day and, and half the night as well. Um, and it's on, uh, on chains. 
so it can't maneuver and it's not going to give way to any boating traffic so it's really important that if you see the ferry loading up its cars and it's got all its cars facing forwards and it's lifting up its ramps and it's looking like it's going to get underway um, you need to hold off and, and perhaps do some turns or some circles um, to make sure you're not trying to then rush rush in front of the ferry so if it looks like it's moving or indeed if it is already moving make sure you're passing behind uh, the car ferry um, the car ferry is also a good indicator where it lands on, on both Painesville and Raymond Island. It's a good indicator of where the public berthing is. So on the Painesville side, anywhere south of the ferry landing, so all of this area here is public jetties. Uh, that's public berthing where you can moor your, um, your boat for the, for the night. Um, on any of the public jetties, and you'll see it um, certainly in Painesville, uh, but this is a general comment for all of the public jetties, it's important that you check the colour coding and the sign on the jetty. And, and as a good, um, um, a good indicator for you, you want to try and avoid any area that's painted red or yellow. So red is permit only and yellow is very short term um, uh, dropping off or picking up, etc. Um, so even if it's a public jetty, just avoid the red and the yellow areas. Otherwise, there's plenty of public berthing all the way down um, uh, south of the ferry landing in Painesville. It's also where the main esplanade is and all of the shops and, and restaurants, um, etc. Um, around the southern side of Painesville at number 36 here, there is another public jetty. It's called the Progress Jetty. Um, and if you've read our manual, you'll see that we go to great lengths to uh, indicate that that is out of bounds. Okay, so um, Riviera Nordic boats are not to use the Progress Jetty at the southern end of Painesville. Um, the water is too shallow and it's, it's quite uh, exposed and, and can be quite um, uncomfortable uh, or even dangerous in there at times. So please avoid the Progress Jetty and we want to use these um, public jetties um, south of the ferry landing. On the Raymond Island side, um, and of course Raymond Island is, is famous for its koala um, spotting. Um, so again, if you head to Raymond Island, you're guaranteed to see, to see koalas. Um, and uh, there's a public jetty on the Raymond Island side, diagonally opposite the crossing of the ferry. So that's it here at number, number 29. Um, again, just check the color coding on the jetty. Um, keep in mind that the uh, even though this is a car ferry, um, pedestrians can use the ferry as much as you like for free. Um, so you can moor the boat on one side and experience both Painesville and, and Raymond Island. Um, I'm not going to cover a lot more in, in Painesville. It looks more complex probably than what it is. Um, again, it's a, a narrow sort of area, so um, we would encourage our, our sailing boats to be doing this under motor only. Um, and uh, the only other thing I want to point out in Painesville is that towards the end of Slip Road, and it's not really indicated here, but towards the end of Slip Road, if you can see that, um, there is a jetty there which has fuel bowsers on it. Um, now you're not going to need to, to top up your fuel, um, however I, I pointed out because it also has fresh water supply there uh, and the ability to, to pump out your uh, waste holding tanks as well. Um, heading out the northern end of Painesville, um, the strait uh, finishes at this point here and we're back out into Lake King. Um, but what I want to highlight to you is that there's a, a port hand marker, a red marker, um, uh, which uh, is a long way offshore here as we leave this, the strait. And in fact, to get around that, and we're staying on the deep water side of that marker, um, as we're leaving the strait, it kind of feels like you're just going to turn slightly left to get out around, around that marker. So to, to give that some more context, if we go back to this plan down here, we're leaving the strait and we're making sure we stay on the deep water side of, of that red marker there. And then we're out in the, the larger expanse of Lake King. So really nice open water out here for sailing. Um, and this is where our three major rivers uh, flow into the Gippsland Lakes, the Tambo, the Nicholson and, uh, and the Mitchell. And of course the Mitchell River flows out into the lake system via these um, naturally occurring silt jetties which are, are now the, the longest silt, silt jetties in, in the whole world. Um, so really, really impressive, especially if you see an aerial, um, an aerial view of them. Um, if we look at these rivers here, and I'll start with the Tambo River, um, the Tambo has a, a channel which sticks straight out in, into Lake King and before we look at that in more detail um, on another plan, you can see just how far that sticks out into Lake King. So if you're looking for the entrance into the Tambo River, you don't want to be hugging the shoreline looking for the entrance, we need to be out in the middle of Lake King, somewhere off Point King in fact. And once you find the channel, it's just a nice straight channel which guides you straight into the mouth of the Tambo. Um, to look at that in a bit more detail up here on Plan G, uh, this is the Tambo River here and you see we've just got a straight channel that goes straight into the river. The key is to find the channel and line it up and all of a sudden it becomes nice and straightforward. 
Um, just a little further over to the, I guess, to the west, we've got the entrance into both the Mitchell and the Nicholson rivers. So they share a channel, at least initially. And this channel doesn't stick a long way out. It actually sort of runs parallel to the land um, up the northern um, sort of shoreline of Lake King. So if you look at that in more detail again here, we've got a straight channel which is running kind of parallel to the shoreline. So we do need to get in fairly close to the shore down here, line up that channel and we can come straight down the middle. Um, now there is a point that we need to turn off if we're heading down into the Nicholson River um, and it's really important because it is the one spot on the Gippsland Lakes that does have rock and, and reef um, and we can do a lot of damage to the boats if, if we get it wrong in this area. Um, and it's uh, highlighted by this cardinal mark here. Now that is an east cardinal mark. It's telling you the good water is to the east, which is this side. I'm gonna put a tick there. Um, it also means then um, by default that we don't wanna to go to the west of it. So everything in this area through here is horribly shallow and rocky. Okay, so if we're going into the Mitchell River, and I mentioned at the outset there is a jetty, it's not shown on this plan, but there is a jetty just inside the entrance of uh, the silt jetties, and you're welcome to use, use that jetty. And to do so, we just keep red markers to our left to port, and green markers to starboard as we come into the mouth of the river, and we can stop there. Um, if we're heading to the Nicholson River, again, as I said, we start with the same channel. But just before we get to the East Cardinal marker, we turn off, we turn right, and we head down this way. So it's between the last of the green markers and before the East Cardinal mark, we go between. That's where we turn off. And further down here, we've got a couple of red markers that we're going to leave to our left to port. And then as we come around uh, the top of this channel, we're just trying to line up this channel to head straight through the middle and we're in the deeper water then of the, the river itself. Um, so up the Nicholson River, you've got public berthing um, just before the, the Princess Highway Bridge. Uh, you've got a general store up there. You've also got the, um, the hotel as, as well. Um, and it's not too far to travel up the, uh, the Nicholson to that, to that area. Up the uh, Tambo River, and I might just go back to our very first overall plan to show you the extent of where, again, where you can go. Once you're in the Tambo River, the first tight bend here is Johnsonville and really good facilities there at Johnsonville, uh, public berthing, um, toilet facilities, barbecues, etc. Um, so that's that's your first good opportunity to, to stop. If you head about the same distance again, you get up to Swan Reach and that's where the Princess Highway Bridge is. So that's the limit for our, our yachts. Again, there's a public jetty there at Swan Reach and there's also a hotel there as well. Um, for our motor cruisers, you can get a bit more nature based by heading further up to these bends in the river, which we, we call the cliffs. So where you see the, uh, I guess they're ready, red, red, orange cliffs. That's the, the limit um, for our motor cruisers up the Tambo. So really, really good um, opportunities for berthing up here, really sheltered. Um, so a good spot to be if the, the uh, winds are gonna get strong or, or turn on you or the weather turns on you. Um, and a really nice experience in, in big boats to be able to um, venture a long way up a, up a river. Um, so that's the middle chunk of the lakes. Thanks for sticking with me. We've just got a little bit more to go as we head further, uh, further west. Um, probably at this point, it's worth pointing out where we've covered so far up to uh, say Duck Arm up here and Sperm Whale Head. Um, probably 80 or 90% of, of the cruising that uh, most of us choose to do on the lakes is, is really from here back. Um, there's less opportunity for good overnight protected um, mooring spots around the shoreline further down Lake Victoria. So um, what I would indicate to you is that if you're heading further west um, than, than this area here, it's probably for the purpose of seeing the township of Locksport um, or getting all the way into McLennan Strait, uh, which is nice and sheltered once you're in the strait here. Um, so Locksport um, has two public jetties. You'll see the blue stars here. And if I go to plan D, uh, which is here, it just gives us a little bit more, little bit more detail. So Locksport is a, is a lovely town, but it's, it's very long and it's very narrow. Um, so it, it can be a little difficult to get your bearings uh, when you're at Locksport. Um, there is uh, at the first star here, number 12, and you'll see this little inlet. This is a private marina. 
Um, so we can't use the marina, however the, the blue star indicates there is a public jetty just outside the marina. So what we can do from out here, there's just a couple of red and green markers that we're going to stay between and that'll take us to the public jetty outside the marina there. Um, have a look at our, our um, table in the folder that we showed you earlier to see in what conditions it's sheltered and in what conditions um, it's, it's a bit too exposed. But you can see generally that uh, Lock Sport is, is quite exposed in any sort of northerly um, direction. Um, it's quite sheltered from, from a southerly um, or even a southeasterly. Um, so uh, we've got this opportunity here for berthing and then there's another public jetty down here uh, at number 10. Um, that one doesn't have any sort of channel. We can just approach that jetty from, from seaward um, and head straight onto that, uh, that public jetty there. Um, Lake Victoria through this area, so between, um, you know, say Sperm Whale Head and Lock Sport, um, there are some shallow areas through there. Um, again, I would encourage you um, not to be hugging, hugging shorelines on either side, either the northern shoreline or the southern shoreline. Um, head down the middle um, for sailing boats that are perhaps trying to do some tacking up or, or down Lake Victoria. Just be conscious of not trying to get too close to the shorelines. Be a bit conservative and, and make your tack, um, you know, a good couple hundred metres from the, from the shore. You've got plenty of, of width there to, to tack your way up the up the middle. Um, the furthest uh, west that we can go as we mentioned earlier is um, the far end of McLennan Strait. Um, that is an area called Plover Point. Uh, most of the time it's really nice and sandy so it's actually quite a nice beach there um, and it's quite sheltered uh, as well. Um, and uh, earlier in the strait as we first enter the strait we've got Holland's Landing um, on, our, on our right hand side as we enter the strait. Uh, McLennan Strait. There is the opportunity for public berthing at Holland's Landing as well. There used to be a general store there, unfortunately that's, um, that's no longer there, so there's no longer the opportunity for supplies at Holland's Landing. Um, so what I've done there is given you a really, uh, well in fact quite a detailed overview of, of the lake system and the different voyages available to you. Um, I just want to recap some of the key messages. Um, number one is that you must be on top of the weather forecast. Um, speak to us if you're unsure about what that forecast is telling you. Um, number two, you need to make sure that you're planning an overnight destination that's going to be sheltered from the forecast wind direction and that is extremely important. Again, talk to us if you want some extra advice um, around that. Um, now I've spoken a lot about um, trying to avoid shallow areas. Um, of course sometimes we do make mistakes and we get it wrong. Um, I would encourage you to make sure as I said earlier you are you know concentrating and that, um, that at least one or two people are designated as navigators at, at any time. Um, but if it does go wrong um, you'll know about it, the boat will run aground. Um, typically all of the lake bed is soft bottom so it's sand and weed and, and mud um, and the act of running aground will rarely do damage to uh, to the boat. Um, however, it's what we choose to do next that can sometimes um, make things worse, basically. So if the boat runs aground, if you're on a sailing boat and you've been sailing, drop your sails, um, give yourself a decent opportunity of reversing off, off the sandbank. Um, but if it's not moving literally in 20 or 30 seconds, um, control back to neutral, shut it down, give us a call back at the office or on the emergency mobile phone, and we'll come out and assist you from there. Um, so typically that's not a big deal. We've got a high speed rescue boat. We can get to you anywhere, typically within um, no more than 30 or 40 minutes. Um, during that time, we would ask you to, to please not accept help from any any uh, private boats that are that are passing by. Um, if we get other people involved, we can just exacerbate the problem. So um, politely decline any other help. Um, Rivier Aeronautics on their way to assist you. Um, we'll tow you off, off the bank. Um, and get you on your way again. If you're on a yacht, we may ask you for your main halyard. That's the rope that pulls your mainsail up um, because it gives us a direct line of attachment to the top of your mast. Um, and by doing so, um, by having a direct line to the top of the mast, um, if I can give you a crude example, um, that's the top of our mast. We can tow you from the top of the mast gently sideways and by leaning the boat over, we can get the keel of your yacht out of the mud and essentially drag you into um, into some deeper water. Um, so yeah, it's not a not necessarily a big deal if you run aground, but please allow us to help you. We don't charge you for it. We'd prefer to come out and help make sure that you are on your way again um, nice and safely and um, uh, without too much concern. 
So that is uh, the overview of, of the map briefing. Um, again, I just highlight that tool that's available on our website as well, which is essentially an electronic chart plotter version of, uh, of these, uh, these maps. Um, just do your pre-planning, enjoy it as part of your, um, as part of your experience of, of boating, because um, boating really, uh, aside from the physical boat itself, it's all about the weather and the, and the navigating. Um, so we're gonna leave it there and um, look forward to joining you again shortly.